pictures coming to life. Not like this, like these. Makerspace can make this happen for you. Located in the basement of Morgan Hall, Makerspace offers a 3D printing lab to all students and with just three simple steps you can create the impossible. Along with imagination, the first step is learning how to design. Creative, engaged folks who are collaborators, who are outside the box thinkers, who tackle problems with a gusto that, that is not necessary, frankly, when you're dealing with a curriculum that is a lot more predictable. Life is not predictable. And in the business world in particular, what we want are people who can think on their feet. And so as a member of the business community, I and I'm sure hundreds, if not thousands of other folks who want to be successful and to share that success with the community, know that we're going to have to have people who are up to the challenge of solving the bigger, harder problems in America and across the world. So a makerspace is, is a place, it's a, it's a, it's a laboratory, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a home for creativity and innovation. Create. Creativity plays one of the most important roles when 3D printing. With creativity, you can make everyday classwork enjoyable. Biology is a piece of cake with 3D printing involved. And geometry is so much easier to comprehend. Are you ready folks? Brace yourselves. Cardboard. Now this is what cardboard looks like when it is cut precisely with a laser cutter from the Makerspace Lab. Pretty cool, right? You can construct this and more by using your imagination and creativity, applying designing skills that were taught to you, and thinking critically. Makerspace, a 3D printing lab open to all students and faculty. Located in the basement of Morgan Hall. Unleash your creativity. They should, one, look beyond or put their judgmental ways aside when interacting with new people because I know that's the first instinct of younger people is to judge based off of what they see. So I think for one, they should look beyond that and two, get, the know, get to know the person before they actually decide what they think about them and to look beyond what race they are because every race is different and everybody comes from different places. I think that they feel like they could relate more to people of the same race. For instance, 
personally, I'll use myself as an example, say that I think I hang around nothing but black people, if you want to say, because I feel like the, the white, a white person or a Hispanic person could not relate to the struggles that I go through just because of the community I live in or, or places that I've been and things that I've been through. So I would think that a black girl would understand more versus a white girl because I would think that white people don't go through issues, which we all do. Well, um, in general, I think they should speak up because um, when I think of a leadership role, I always think of a white person in that role. And um, I've noticed it, and people usually hesitate when choosing someone with a different racial background. So people are just more, um, I guess, fearful of, for whatever reason, that they will take that place. And um, I also think that people with different racial backgrounds many times have a certain talent, a certain gift. And really, it's often overlooked because of that person's racial back background. So. I think with patience we should um, just add those people into the mix so they have um, as high of a role as white people do. I'm Anthony Price from Tech Titan TV, and I did the interview with Coach Delaney. We talked about fall sports. Athletic, athletic director. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for this opportunity. Good to have you on the show. We offer every fall sport that you can you can offer under the IHSA guidelines. We have football, all three levels. We have cross country for boys and girls, uh, boys and girls soccer, uh, girls golf, boys tennis, and uh, it. It's off to a really good start. Our boys soccer team is, is currently in first place in our new conference that we've gone back to, uh, the North Central Conference, which is uh, the original conference in the state of Indiana. And we left in 1960, but now we're back. Um, would you tell us more about um, like any grade requirements? To be a student athlete here at Tech and, and IPS, you have to have both a 2.0 average and you cannot have more than two grades under a C. Um, and that, you have to have both the requirements. Sometimes when we do eligibility, we see one or the other, but the, both of those have to. And it's, it's only to help the student athletes because the NCAA has up their standards. Every student athlete must now have a core of 2.3. And so if we don't, have those standards, we're not helping our student athletes that are going to go on and play in college. Uh, are there any classes or anything you could take for students to get eligible for, for, for any sport or anything in the season? Um, during the season, it's based on your, your classes, the nine weeks or the semester grades, depending on which one comes. Um, but it, it's really important because if you're ineligible, you're ineligible for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to be a student every day in class. Can you tell us more about the basketball team? Sure. Since you're the head coach. Um, we, uh, we're really excited about this year. We have a hard working group of guys who really like each other. The chemistry is really good and also uh, they've been working since the second day of school. So it's been, it's been a real joy to see them progress and uh, we feel really good about this year. Um, well, thank you for coming on our show. Well, thank you. Appreciate it.